Hey there, and welcome to another Factorio video. I'm Exterminator, and thank you for joining me today. And uh, this is going to be a fairly brief uh, little tutorial and explanation slash spotlight on beacon layouts, uh, mostly the two uh, most common layouts. Now, I actually was given inspiration to do this video based on a comment someone made on my last uh, spotlight thing about the uh, factorial calculator, the Kirk McDonald calculator, which seemed to be really well received, which is fantastic. Uh, and there were some suggestions for other ones to go over, which I think I will in the future. But someone um, in that video, I was mentioning the modules and beacons and how you set that up in the calculator. And I mentioned eight beacons and someone commented and said, whoa, like how do you get eight beacons to touch an assembler? And uh, you know, I think that's a great question because if you're newer to the game, I know when I was newer for the longest time, I didn't really understand Beacon super well, and even once I did, I would maybe put one or two per machine. Um, but what uh, a lot of people do when they go into a mega base stage, a very large base, and just need the maximum production possible, uh, is they will do these common layouts for beacons, uh, which you see in front of you here, and I will demonstrate and show you and kind of walk you through them. So, and this is how we get either eight or even 12 beacons per machine. Uh, so, this one here, this is the one I usually go to. Uh, I just personally like it better visually. Uh, it is a little bit more space efficient. Of course, the machines are slower since they are being only hit by 12 beacons opposed to, or sorry, 8 beacons opposed to 12 beacons. Um, so, it may come out as a wash in the end, but I personally prefer this one. I'm not saying it's just objectively better. I think it's, it's just my personal preference. Um, and this will work, of course, with assemblers and furnaces and anything that can be affected by beacons. Now, what can be affected? Uh, pump jacks, mining drills, all three assembling machines, only electric furnaces, uh, oil refineries, chemical plants, labs, I believe centrifuges, and I think that's it. Um, the two... Previously, stone and steel furnaces cannot be affected by beacons. Um, it's really only electric entities, I guess, is, is you, how you could kind of qu quantify that. Um, you know, burner mining drills are not affected. Uh, power is not affected. Uh, it, they do take a lot of power, though. Uh, so beacons work in a way. A quick explanation about beacons. Beacons provide this coverage area, as you can see in this yellow-orange square. Um, anything within this area is affected by the beacon itself. And what a beacon does is it takes modules that you put in it and it, it transmits that effect out throughout this area. Uh, so if we look at modules, we have speed modules which increase the speed of machines um, while also increasing their energy consumption massively. Um, so it's kind of a trade-off there. Uh, a lot of power taken for a speed increase. Efficiency modules do kind of the opposite. Um, they don't slow down machines, they just decrease the energy consumption. So if you're having power problems, want to reduce your pollution a little bit because you're producing less power if you're on steam power. Um, these would be good. And then productivity modules, uh, which are quite interesting. So they increase energy massively, even more than speed modules. Um, they actually slow down the uh, speed, the craft speed of the machine they're put in, and they increase pollution. However, they give you productivity 10% per one of these max level three modules. And productivity is a very, very strong thing in the game, extremely strong. It's basically free resources. Because uh, once we put this in here, if we, for example, I know this is about beacons, but just so you have context, um, there's two bars here. Where normally in an assembler, we just have one. We have a secondary one with these modules in it. And uh, I'm actually going to fill these. Uh, and what this does is these stack. So it's 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. Um, so we have 40% productivity in here. And what's going to happen when I turn this on is you're going to see an additional bar increase and it's going to be a purple bar. And once it hits the end, we get a free craft of this. We get a free science pack. Uh, so this is, you know, in fact, let's actually, let's do uh, a test here. So if I just dump all of this in here and then I put only, let's say I put 10, right? 10 resources in here, which normally would be enough for 10 science packs uh, because they cost one of each. If we dump this in here, uh, we're actually going to get extra. It's actually a yellow bar. I believe it used to be purple. Um, and you're gonna see when this hits here, we actually get a free pack. You saw it kind of tick over there. And we now have 14. 
uh, even though we only put in resources for 10, we have 14 because we have a 40% productivity bonus. So this is super strong. Okay, so those are your modules. Uh, the beacons take modules. Uh, they can only take speed modules and uh, efficiency modules. They cannot take productivity modules. That would be a bit too powerful. Uh, and the speed modules, so each one of these speed modules increases the, the speed of a machine by 50%. Uh, now this is where it gets interesting. You can put two of these in a beacon, however, a beacon only outputs its distribution efficiency is 0.5, 50%. So basically it's only going to transmit 50% of the effect of whatever's in it. So if we have a 100% speed increase, 50 plus 50, it's actually only giving 50% because uh, half of 100 is 50 to the machines but these can stack. And this is where we come into the eight beacon or 12 beacon or whatever beacon layouts. So this is how you achieve having eight beacons um, hitting every machine uh, like this in a row. And you can see when you mouse over it, it's showing you which one they hit. Uh, it doesn't really go the other way, unfortunately. But what you do is you place these machines down. So you will place a machine down, let's come over here. And you can have a row like this. This eight beacon layout is mostly used in rows as represented here. And then you place a beacon um, so that it's barely touching on the corner there of the assembly machine. And then from that point, you just drag them in a line, just as I've done here. You just put them in a line, just like this, and then you match it on the top, all the way until you get to the end. Now, the one on the other end is not going to hit just on the corner just because of how the staggering works. But what this will achieve is eight beacons. You can see up there on the right, the crafting speed over there on the right-hand side. Um, every machine has exactly 5.5 craft speed, and uh, you know, which is means it's all being hit by the same amount. They're all being hit by eight beacons. And uh, you can tell this uh, because you can see there number of effect sources. And uh, this is taking into account, you take these out, this is taking into account the modules in them, and then it's also taking into account the beacons. So there's four modules in here, so that's four effect sources, and then there's eight beacons, which equals 12. So each one of these is being hit by eight beacons when they're all in a line here, because they're all overlapping, right? Like these two overlap, this one, and this one overlap, etc., etc., to mean that, you know, when we do this, when we go to place a beacon, you can see how all these are overlapping multiple machines. Uh, and that's how you achieve the eight beacon layout. And what that does, the reason for doing something like this, uh, you could just use it to massively reduce power, but it's typically used for a setup like this where you put productivity modules in your machines to give you free output, basically. Um, but then the beacons with speed modules are there to offset the slowdown. Uh, because, you know, remember these give you a negative 15% speed. So if we had no beacons, these machines would actually be 60% slower than normal. They would be incredibly slow. Uh, you know, if, if we just, for example, take one of these and we set it to the same recipe and put in these and put this in, look how slow this is compared to how it was before. And you can see there, it's minus 60% craft speed. We've gone from a normal craft speed of 1.25 to 0.5. And this is the difference here between this. Look how much faster that is. Okay, so that's why we use beacons. Now, of course, this does come at the cost of a significant power increase. You can see each one of these machines is taking a little over three and a half megawatts each. And then the beacons take power, of course, as well. Uh, then we come down to another very common, I would say, layout, which is a 12 beacon layout. And this can be rearranged a little bit to change it. It doesn't have to be this exact layout, but this is the one I have uh, memorized and the one that I usually use. And uh, it looks something like this. So instead of putting them in a line, just like this, uh, we're actually surrounding it. Uh, you can see here just like little corners here. And this now has uh, 14 effect sources. The two models in here, because the furnace, of course, only takes two modules. But I'm doing this just to demonstrate a furnace is affected. Uh, but if you want consistency, we can simply replace it with this. It's the wrong button. Uh, so there we go. 16, right? The four models in here plus 12 beacons. And this is pretty straightforward how they're all hitting. They're just all surrounding it. Uh, now again, this guy does get a little tricky. If you move them inwards, you can't actually get the overlap really correct. 
Uh, and as you can see, this is bigger, but this can um, what we call tile. So if I take my copy tool here, um, we can overlap these, right? You don't need to double the beacons. If we do this, it's a complete waste because uh, we, we, we just don't need to do that. We can overlap these beacons. And by doing this, what happens is these middle beacons are actually hitting both assembling machines. So yes, granted, this is bigger, uh, but again, keeping in mind that it's being hit by four more beacons than the one above it, uh, which is you know a pretty significant uh, difference there. So this is kind of what this would look like. Obviously, again, this is you know if we copy this, you know you can fit maybe three of these in the space of this, you know, opposed to all of this. So it is quite a bit bigger. Again, you can do um, different layouts for this a little bit. Uh, but you'll notice if I like move these in to try to condense it, uh, it doesn't work so good because, you know, then, you know, I mean, you can do it. There are a few different ways you could do it. So uh, one thing we could do, you know, for example, is uh, if we did just a line like this, you can kind of move these closer in rather than having that full two space. You know, you can do something like that maybe, but then you're not overlapping. It's kind of a waste of beacons. Um, you know, you can mess around with this, but that first one I showed you, that is generally um, what I see in a 12 beacon layout. And this is, so this is what I'm referring to when I say 8 beacon layouts, 12 beacon layouts. It's how many beacons you're getting to hit a machine. And uh, until you see it, it may be kind of quite confusing as to how you can get that many beacons to affect a machine. But the fact they, they their areas overlap like this and can stack the effect, um, that's how you achieve something like this uh, and then these these are just cheaty power sources so i'm not having power poles run all through here but uh, there you go again there are other beacon layouts there are quite a few others you can try these i would say are the two most common uh, the 8 and 12 and uh, you know i've seen people do 10 certainly nothing wrong with that it doesn't really break anything it's just going to be faster or slower or if you're doing very precise calculations it's going to change those because of the speed of the machine but uh 12 beacon, 8 beacon layout, it's kind of a personal choice, uh, situational. Like I said, obviously this one is significantly bigger, but, you know, the machines are significantly faster, uh, you know, due to the fact that, that they, uh, you know, due to the fact that, that they have 12 beacons hitting them. You know, it's a pretty significant increase. If we just go ahead and place these down really quick and then put the modules in them, and check out the speed of this machine, uh, we will notice it is much faster. Uh, it's a crafting speed of 8 compared to the crafting speed of 5.5. That's huge. That's a that's a really, really large increase. 540% increase up from 340 is 200% faster. Um, so definitely, uh, definitely worth keeping in mind there that that's, you know, it's bigger, but it's faster. That doesn't mean it may be harder to supply it. Uh, there's a lot of trade-offs, which is kind of a whole other topic, much too long for this video, which I think has already been a bit lengthy. But there you go. So hopefully this is just a good general explanation for modules, beacons, how they work, how to get these layouts, and what I'm referring to when I do refer to these things, especially in like future calculator videos. Hopefully this will help people out. Uh, and I believe that'll do it. You know, feel free to share your beacon layouts and stuff down below. Like I said, these are certainly not the only two. There's many others you can do. I'd say these are the most common that I've seen at least. Uh, and I think that'll do it. If you did enjoy the video and found it helpful, a like is much appreciated so other people can help uh, can find the video too and hopefully find it helpful. If you're new to the channel, uh, I give you a welcome and I uh, encourage you to subscribe to keep up with all the content that I'm putting out here for Factorio. And leave your thoughts and such below. As always, until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and do take care.